video, I would like to uh, share with you some information about the uh, full wizard session. So this module on the Carrier Hub software is basically um, is a very good and effective tool to allow you to start uh, doing the system analysis for your uh, for your building uh, at the very preliminary uh, concept design stage where you want to analyze the energy consumption of your building and explore different type of uh, you know uh, HVAC system availability that you can select for a building at the very earliest stage on. So uh, the calculation in this stage is mostly for the energy analysis uh, purpose and uh, and the very detailed analysis needs to be done afterward uh, to uh, to fine tune the uh, the calculation load and numbers that uh, associate with your with your building characteristic. So when you're starting a project, you would like to know what's the energy cost of the building as a whole based on the total square footage of the building and the type of occupancy, and also want to discuss with the client on different options and what kind of systems, uh, whether it's centrally or locally, can be selected and, and uh, established for that building. So this uh, full uh, wizard session would be a very helpful tool to give you some uh, preliminary benchmark for that type of, uh, you know, that type of concept design. So I open it from the carrier app on the top where you can see my cursor where there is the um, full wizard session. I'm going to close this first, go back here. As you can see, this is uh, use wizard to create a new data. So I'm going to create a new data here. So I'm going to um, turn on this uh, module for full wizard session. And we have to basically work our way down from the weather uh, information to building information, then you go to equipment selection and ultimately based on the utility rate in your location or local area, you can eventually find out, uh, you know, what's going to be the cost of operation and the, uh, and the you know, uh, the energy consumption in your building based on the type of system that you select. So, um, this is this weather location is default. I'm going to change all of this. So I'm going to go to the weather on the left side. So the next uh, you know box opens up is basically the ge geographic location. You can either go directly into this uh, geographic map and select your location, or you can simply come on the bottom and select from uh, drop down menu. I'm going to go to uh, Canada where I am. So I'm going to select the uh, province and the city. So I'm going to go to province of Ontario and then I'm going to go to Toronto city. So basically, if you also scroll on the on this uh, tab on the top, you can also see that areas that I have just selected on the bottom is going to be highlighted. Then I go to city and it shows the, um, you know, the area, local area within the province of Ontario. So in the carrier app, basically, it gives you uh, in about eight locations you can select uh, in the province of Ontario, and I have selected the Toronto. So this is this is uh, required for all of your calculation because uh, the elevation of your uh, location or building location and uh, its weather, weather data, uh, which uh, carrier app um, contains from the ASHRAE, uh, ASHRAE standards. Uh, would be helpful for understanding the peak uh, load calculation for the heating degree days and cooling degree days based on the worst case scenario uh, on the design condition. So I'm going to go OK here. So once we determined our weather location, I'm going to go to our building. As I said, again, this is going to be very high level calculation and it's supposed to give a very high level report on the rough estimate energy consumption of a building is at this point is nothing uh, very detailed but uh, it's a very good starting point to understand what is the right approach for your concept design so for this building i'm assuming i'm designing for an office building i'm going to go with a high-rise building so there are multiple options low, medium, high, I'm going to go high rise. So this is going to be higher than seven stories building. 
And for the building identifier, um, I'm going to put here built. Um, actually, I'm going to put um, say B-1. That's going to be uh, my building identifier. So the type of uh, shape of the building, I'm going to keep it as rectangular. As you can see, there are multiple options you can select from. Um, you know, this, this requires a lot of more detailed uh, analysis and, and tutorial if you need to go through everything. But for, for, for the purpose of this training, I'm going to just go with the rectangular. So basically, we have to just provide the X and Y uh, dimension of our building footprint. On the top, as you can see, I'm going to select 100 feet by 100 feet um, is my building uh, footprint. As you see, when you click on the uh, schematic left-hand side, your size is adjusted from rectangle to a, to a square shape because I selected 100 by 100. The number of uh, floor, I'm going to get this to a 30-story 30, uh, 30 building. I'm going to keep everything as default floor to floor height. I'm going to keep it as 12. This is a slab to slab height. And then floor to ceiling height is 9 feet. Uh, average window per ratio to wall, I'm going to keep it as 50%, meaning that 50% of our entire building envelope surface would be windows. So I'm going to keep it as it is. And for here, this is important, typical intermediate floor. So if we keep this checked marked, basically, the report that we get is based on um, the difference in the load in each level, which is always at the very top of the building, on the bottom of the building, and also in the middle, um, you know, in the middle of the building somewhere. So when we when we check this mark, um, you know, the carrier app does not give you the load calculation for every single floor for the 30 story building. It just gives you the report based on three typical floor, which is the top floor, uh, below floor, or ground floor, and also the medium floor. So basically, the, the medium level would be the same as all other floors, with the exception of ground and, uh, and the top floor. Um, so, but if you keep it unchecked, then uh, you have to, you, you, are, you are given like the, the calculation for every single floor. So I'm going to keep this as a uh, check mark. So you see the number of spaces that that carrier have creates is 30 in here. But when I check mark it, it becomes three because as I said, it just focuses on three floor as a representative of load, various loads. So the other information here is already automatically calculated by the carrier app. And as you see, they are all uh, blanked off. So uh, we can intervene in this, uh, you know, in these areas because they are determined based on the, you know, based on the each side of our building. And also the window ratio. So then I go to the next. Okay, now we have to provide a little bit more information about our ventilation. So uh, as you see, the software I am using uh, uses the ASHRAE standard 62.1-2016, uh, which is um, latest ASHRAE standard for the minimum ventilation requirement. So basically, what we have to do, we have to select the type of occupancy that is for this building. In this case, I'm going to go to, to select the office building. I'm going to go and find the office building from this drop-down menu. It might be somewhere above. So I'm going to select this office as the general um, you know, occupancy type. Let's not forget that a 30-story building has so many other uh, spaces that are not categorized as office space, like corridors, um, say, um, other spaces like um, potentially like a restaurant or entertainment uh, spaces or something else that, that might not fit in here. But again, because this is a preliminary calculation, we are looking at the dominant usage for the facility. So in this case, office. So when you select that from the ASHRAE, automatically it selects what is the outdoor air requirement per person. 
PFM or cubic feet per minute of uh, outdoor air per person, and also what is the rate of the outdoor per square footage of this type of occupancy. And then, as you know, from the actual standard 62.1, automatically the calculation takes place for that type of occupancy for the entire building's uh, fresh air requirement. So I'm not going to change anything here. Occupancy, you can keep it as 200 feet per minute, a square feet per person. And uh, for the occupancy schedule, we want it to be occupied during the office space. The level of the activity, there are all type of options, but this is office work, I keep it as it is. And also information related to the lighting or any other, uh, you know, um, any other electrical um, usage that we have here. I'm not going to change anything in here because this is just a demonstration how this uh, energy analysis process works here. And then on the right hand side, you have to have your building envelope um, heat transfer rate characteristic uh, selected. Okay, so I'm going to just select this for the sake of this um, you know, tutorial. So we are having a, a steel type uh, frame wall. And uh, for the roof type, I'm not gonna change anything in here, but you always have option to go either based on the zone that is determined by the ASHE. And by the way, when we're talking about the zone, if you look at the ASHE standard 90.1 for energy, uh, I can show you a table here. If you look at this table, this table is from ASHE 90.1, energy standard for building except low-rise uh, residential building. It's extracted from there. Um, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So if you go to the latest ASHE standard, you can find the zone based on your geographic location. I'm in Toronto, so I'm coming to here. And basically, that's the zone I'm located in. So this is a zone, and that's the city. So you know that, and then based on this, you can select your um, wall membrane um, heat transfer rate or U value, uh, which is the rate of heat transfer um, in the uh, building envelope. So you have wall, roof, and then window. So I'm going to keep everything as it is and then go finish. So basically, this column determines your building envelope uh, rate of heat transfer or characteristic for the heat transfer. Go finish. So after we determined also the building, as you can see, the information is built up on this right-hand side for the building characteristic I'm selecting. The interesting part is the equipment selection. So, so in the equipment. basically, if we have very accurate information in the starting point where we filled up the information, we can get, uh, you know, we can we can get uh, pretty much a good starting number. Uh, for our energy analysis, understanding what is the best choice of our equipment for the building we are designing for. So thank you very much for watching this video. I might uh, record other videos uh, with detailed information about uh, this feature within the Carrier Hub. Please uh, don't forget to subscribe. I would welcome to see your comments. Uh, if you're interested in different uh, type of tutorials or anything that could help us provide uh, more productive um, tutorials, that would be really welcome. Thank you very much for watching.